So this one's going to get a little raw. It's going to go to some places and it's going to rub some people the wrong way. And uh, I don't care, frankly. So uh, with that uh, brief disclaimer, here we go. One of my absolute favorite people in the entire entertainment industry is uh, Lexi Alexander. Uh, Oscar-nominated writer-director, uh, Green Street, uh, Hooligans, Punisher Warzone. Uh, she's directed all your favorite uh, TV shows, especially if you're a geek, which I know many of you are. Um, Lexi is like a hurricane with a black belt. She is a sheer force of uh, nature. Uh, also uh, an immensely talented uh, martial artist. Uh, one, once upon a time... Played Katana in the Mortal Kombat uh, touring show around the company. Um, I've had the privilege to train with her. She's she's amazing. She's a, she's a person of so much talent and vision and innovation and just sheer will and passion uh, for subjects that nobody in the entertainment industry wants to hear about, uh, such as the fact that uh, despite the fact it's 2018, over 95% of uh, showrunners on television are still white dudes with predominantly white staffs. Uh, and that's very hard when you're a woman or a person of color, or especially a woman who is also a person of color, trying to break into television or into the entertainment industry in uh, general. Lexi is tireless uh, in trying to both have a career on her own terms, which she does miraculously, despite having everything against her in this industry as a very loud, vocal, unabashed advocate uh, for marginalized creators and still push forward that uh, ever-receding line of parody for said creators. Uh, she's, she's amazing, and I, I'm, I'm privileged to call her a friend. And I just... Lexi is someone who uh, very often clarifies things for me um, in a very sharp, vivid immediate way like for on very complicated uh, issues uh, because she is so singularly focused and so sharply intelligent and so uh, perceptive and insightful it's just it helps to know her because knowing her every day I either learn something or uh, am able to figure something out that I was that I was struggling with and I'm grateful for that uh, the reason I bring that up is uh, Lexi helped bring again, once again, clarify uh, two very big things for me just just the other day. Being a writer, a professional writer, uh, is very difficult in any industry, entertainment industry, publishing industry. Being a professional uh, writer of any kind of, of media is very difficult because writers exist at the bottom of the trough. This is this is the system and the uh, and the placement that we've accepted over the past century or so. Here in America, especially. Um, there are, of course, exceptions to that. Uh, writers who have ascended to become said famous showrunners. Uh, theater, they have a little more respect for the writer than they do in other, in other places. But even then, you know, theater is its own, is its own mixed bag of challenges. But uh, it's very hard to be a writer. And it's very hard to wake up day after day and not only practice your craft on any worthwhile level, but deal with all the bullshit of the, of the industries uh, in which you find yourself. And that's what really uh, gets me down most days. I have days where I just don't know why I bother to participate in any of these industries, be it the entertainment industry or the publishing industry. Um, there are days when I'm like, I, you know, I could, uh, I could just focus on marketing, you know, make a shit ton of money, basically do the same, do the same thing just for, you know, corporations instead of, narratives I uh, come up with, and I'd have to deal with a lot less bullshit. I'd have to care a lot less. And I have an increasing number of those days lately. Um, and it's very hard to figure out a reason to keep going other than, you know, you keep telling yourself, at least where I am, you keep telling yourself one day I'll hit that brass ring, I'll get that novel or that screenplay or that uh, show pitch over the mountain, and then I'll have it made in the shade, at least financially. I'll still have to deal with the bullshit, but at least I'll be getting compensated for it. There's that, but short of that, you have to find short-term reasons to keep going. And um, Lexi, again, uh, clarified, clarified why I do that, and so many of us who feel the same way do that day in and day out. Uh, when she, uh, she was tweeting about 
um, people downgrading media as inconsequential in the grand scheme of things with so many other more important things going on. And she pointed out that media influences everything. Um, and the reason so many of us continue to slog it through these industries despite getting constantly crapped on by them uh, is because we realize the power of stories. We realize the power of media. And even if we aren't getting our stories told on a predominant level, we can at least try to disrupt the most damaging narratives that are out there influencing people in the wrong ways. And she just, that, that, that hit me uh, like a bullet to the brain pan. And I was like, I was like that's, that's exactly it. Like, see, I couldn't have put it better myself. And, uh, and really, it fortified me in a way that, uh, you know, five cups of fiber in the morning, every morning should do for you. Uh, so I appreciated that. But it also uh, put clarity uh, towards something that had been nagging at me for several years. And uh, I'd like to talk about that now. So this was back in 2015, uh, 16. I honestly don't remember at this point. I was at a convention. Uh, I found myself on a panel uh, surrounded by uh, people who were at least 25 to 30 years my senior, all of them. There was a very elderly uh, author. There was a, a person who uh, helped run the convention. Um, I think another guy did music. And then there was a very prominent uh, editor on the far end of the panel. Um, and, I, and I thought nothing of this uh, sitting down on that panel. You know, because, you, you know, a, con a convention is an intersection. And it's supposed to be in, in, in its purest form. Uh, you know, because there's all sorts of bullshit also associated with conventions, is an intersection of, of generations and age and race and sex and all these other things. And it should be. And we should all come together to share stories and views and express ideas. So I thought, hey, this is, this is what we'll do here. I can provide a pretty younger perspective and they can share the wisdom of, uh, of their experience with everybody. Um, five minutes into the panel, I realized this was not to be the case as it quickly degenerated into... All of them passive aggressively ganging up on me as the representative of the current generation, de facto representative. It's not like I put myself out there, is that? And uh, for the next hour, they proceeded to passive aggressively browbeat me about how my generation doesn't know how to act at conventions, how we're only out to promote our work and we make everything about our work and shameless self promotion and what a bad thing this is. <laughs> And it was one of the worst uh, panel experiences I've ever had in over 10 years of doing conventions. Uh, one, just because nobody likes to sit there and get shit on for an hour. Uh, and secondly, because there wasn't really anything I felt I could, I could do about it. The, the woman leading the charge on this was, is not a bad person. She has a very good reputation. She's very sweet in many other contexts. Uh, but, like, my only recourse would have been to, like, yell at a woman in her late 70s or early 80s. I'm not even sure. And I, I didn't feel like that was the best option, especially in front of uh, a room full of people and, again, a very prominent uh, editor of a publisher who, you know, I was with one of the subsidiaries of. So I just pretty much had to sit there and, and take it. I, and it, and it, it was really, it was really unpleasant. And I still remember this, and it still nags at me years later. And I never could figure out why that particular panel uh, stuck with me for so long until I read uh, Lexi's comment, and I got to thinking about um, all the discussions we've had about our various industries. So here's the thing, and this is going to sound incredibly harsh, and it is, and I, well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, from my viewpoint, it's the absolute truth. Um, if you are receiving advice from someone of an, of an older generation, uh, an older author, uh, who is giving you advice about the publishing industry, you need to uh, filter that through, through this perspective. You are receiving advice from a failure. Now, it doesn't matter if the author giving you that advice has been immensely successful in their career. If they sold millions of books and made it onto the bestseller list, made loads of money, won all the awards, in fact the more successful they've been in their career, the bigger the failure they are. You are receiving advice about the publishing industry from a failure. And the reason I say that is this. They are a failure because they didn't fix anything. They didn't fix anything about this industry. They didn't leave uh, the industry better than they found it. In fact, they left it worse in so many ways. 
Uh, and that's the person giving you advice about the industry you find yourself in. It's someone who's saying, throughout my career, despite all the success I had, uh, I chose not to do anything that would advance this industry. And I thought, uh, I thought I'd just leave it for you to fix. Oh, by the way, here's a bunch of criticisms about how you're doing that wrong. Um, I really resent that. I really do. And I resent uh, the generations of writers that have come before me. Uh, in, every, in, in the entertainment industry and in publishing. Uh, because they didn't fix anything. Now, I'm sure many of them tried. Uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure many of them did. But particularly the more successful breed of writer, who were the only ones who were ever in a position to do anything concrete, to affect any kind of concrete change, uh, never got together, never organized, and never elected to do it. And they left worse industries for us who came after them. It's just, it's the absolute uh, truth. It's amazing to me that in 2018, we're having the same exact discussions about what's wrong with publishing that they had 20, 30 years ago. Uh, nothing has changed. In fact, a lot of it has gotten worse, uh, especially in the monetary end of things, uh, despite more scripted series being produced uh, than ever before, despite more books uh, selling uh, in, in recent years. Uh, writers still, by and large, find themselves feeding at the very end of the money spigot in this giant machine uh, called publishing. Uh, Ebook royalties have not increased. We have no collective bargaining power with any of the, you know, three or four mega corporations that run all of publishing, including Amazon. We have no place at a table with any of them. None of our professional organizations do. You know, we contend with uh, these little things that we actually can affect change over, like awards and policing small magazines with shitty contracts. Uh, you know, maybe if a big publisher does something like a contest that's trying to do a rights grab, we can make noise about that and get somebody interested. But beyond that, nobody in position of authority gives a shit what authors have to say about anything, and they have no reason to, because we have no clout, we have no collective, we have no uh, singular voice of authority or power or reasoning or bargaining uh, in any of these in any in any of these uh, industries. Uh, still, you know, when you look at how we're just really starting to sort of kind of deal with uh, the gatekeeping that goes on in, in publishing, uh, just kind of sort of starting to deal with the uh, the rampant uh, misogynistic and racial barriers that exist in publishing. You know, still, just now, finally starting to get into that, for real. It's it's stunning to me that this was left for my generation to deal with after after a century of, uh, of what we know as the modern edifices of, like, entertainment and publishing. We were just handed this giant pile of shit, and everybody said, good luck with that, kid. That's, that's basically what happened. And that's honestly what I wish I'd said on that panel. That's what's been bothering me all these years. The fact that I didn't say any of that. The fact that I didn't at least suggest that, hey, maybe instead of chastising us, uh, authors just coming up now, for needing to go out there and shill our books because marketing in genre fiction publishing is still a thing that doesn't exist, um, especially at these conventions, what have all, which have only gotten more exorbitantly priced, by the way, paying, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars to be at a convention for the, the entire length of something like a world con, uh, instead of chastising us for trying to take every opportunity we can to promote our stuff and get our names out there in this glutted market and this big pile of shit that you left us. Maybe you should, I don't know, apologize for not doing anything. Especially authors uh, like the one who was leading the charge on that, whose husband was sitting in the front row uh, with a corona at, you know, 10 in the morning, lecturing us about professionalism. And this is a guy who at one time broke uh, all the records for a, uh, a novel advance in science fiction. And has won all the awards you can name and, you know, is, is, was one of, the, one of the most prominent names in the field. And, you know, what, what did they do to help us out? What are they doing besides chastising us for our behavior at conventions? Not a, not a goddamn thing. That's, that's really all I can come to. And it really pisses me off. And, you know, you might say that's unfair. You might say, Matt, why, is it, uh, who, why, should, why do I have to take personal responsibility 
for uh, my industry. You know, why? maybe it's all I can do to succeed in spite of that. Uh, and to that I say bullshit. You know, if you were if you were going to be part of this industry, if you were going to participate in it, you absolutely have a responsibility to other freelance writers out there to leave a better industry than you found it and not and not help it perpetuate this bullshit system that we've got. At least that's what I believe. And when I say that, I'm speaking mostly to white people. Um, it's just the truth. Uh, you know, that's, and I feel that on us myself. That's, and that's why every week on Ditch Diggers with Merle Lafferty, I'm try, I do everything I can to try to educate freelance writers coming up to not accept the bullshit conditions that writers accept every day, to take it upon themselves to make active changes in the culture and in the system and in the industries, uh, because that's really the only way I see at this point to affect actual change is to educate the next generation of writers coming up to not accept what we were told or what we were given to accept about the industry. That's, that's a responsibility that I feel, and that's a responsibility I think everyone should feel to advance things uh, for writers and not let them be, the, not let it be the stagnant, you know, piss pool of mediocrity and poverty and uh, exclusivity uh, that we're still waiting through in 2018. At least that's the way I see it. That's going to do it for this week. Please like, share, subscribe. Hit that uh, little bell icon to get notified when I put out new videos, which I do every single week. Uh, reminder that September 19th, uh, the final Sinajur Omnibus, the uh, final Kindle collected edition of my uh, last four Sinajur novels will be coming out. Go pre-order that if you can. Uh, September 8th, I will be at the Long Beach uh, Comic Con doing more... Uh, Doing more panels that hopefully go better than the one I described today. And, of course, I will be at Worldcon in a couple of weeks uh, to attend the Hugo Awards. Mer Lafferty and I nominated for the Dish Shakers podcast, which I, again, just mentioned. So uh, if you're coming out to any of those things, look forward to seeing you. Um, until next week, uh, hit the comments. Let me know uh, how you're doing. Let me know what's going on. Tell me I'm wrong about everything I said. Uh, you know, whatever you're feeling. I just like to hear from you. Uh, but I'll see you next Tuesday. Same Matt time, same Matt channel.